Hey everyone, welcome back. So, uh, last time I left off with finishing welding the back of the cab here, and I spent about 20 minutes trying to plan a ship by hand, and I did make a little bit of progress. I mainly focused on this section here, uh, but it made me realize real quickly that uh, it's high time I jumped on a project that I bought the parts for um, probably almost two years ago now and I just never um, tackled it. But um, what we're gonna be doing here is making a homemade planishing hammer. And we're gonna accomplish that with uh, this Harbor Freight air hammer and a piece of inch and a half DOM tubing. And I also had to order the lower die holder. Um, I also ordered a set of dies to go with it, so I'm hoping they might get here by the end of the week. We'll, we'll see, they're coming from Arizona. Uh, but the first step that I'm gonna take is to cut the handle off of this air hammer because we no longer need the trigger function or the regulator. And we're just gonna thread a hose attachment directly into the air port that will uh, show up once we cut the handle off. Okay, well, pretty much instantly I regretted my decision to cut the handle off so closely to the body, at least right here where the hole is, because I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room to drill and tap that hole for the uh, fitting we're going to put on there. But I think we will be okay. It's just going to be uh, a little close. So I wasn't able to um, thread it as far as I wanted, but that ended up working out okay anyways, because we can't thread the fitting in very far as it is. So. I already hooked it up to air and tested it. It works really good. I actually kind of tried to do it by hand a little bit with the dolly on one side of the weld and the hammer on the underside. And you can see it did a pretty decent job of flattening it out a whole lot quicker than I was doing by hand. So I really can't wait to see what it's gonna do once I get it mounted on a hoop and it doesn't have the ability to jump around. So next step is waiting for the lower die mount and the dies and then we could bend up our hoop and um, unfortunately that's probably not going to be till the end of the week but I can make the clamp that goes around the body of this to hold it to the top of the hoop so that's what I'll get started on now. Hey guys so still working on the planishing hammer and uh, there was a part I forgot to mention I do have a foot pedal control for it I just got all the fittings hooked up for it and um, this is going to connect to the regulator that connects to our air hammer. What I am going to be doing right now is trimming a bit of this uh, aluminum part off. I already started but I stopped because I forgot to videotape it so I'm just cutting it um, about three quarters of an inch higher so that the sleeve that I'm making for it will uh, be able to fully bite onto this part of it. So. I'm just putting it in my bandsaw and making little cuts at a time until it separates. See how our clamp for the air hammer is going to work. I'm gonna weld these uh, little plates on each side of where I split the inch and three quarter tube, and then we'll drill holes through them and stick this bolt through, and that will clamp the air hammer. All right, well, here's our completed assembly. I went ahead and welded these tabs on. And then I made this, um, I just welded this piece of rod to the bolt and welded the nut to the plate. And that way I can remove the power hammer on the fly if I need to. And uh, yeah, all we're waiting on now is a pressure regulator to connect to that. This will go into the other side of the pressure regulator. Then we'll run some line from here to the pedal. And we just have to make a frame and we will be good to go. This is kind of to show you how the unit's gonna work once it's attached to a hoop.
pressure regulator arrived today, so I got that all installed. Just waiting on the line now, and I did get our mount welded to the hoop that I bent up. This is basically what it's gonna be. I left it with a pretty big throat uh, depth. Um, I didn't really think about it too much. Uh, I kind of wish I went smaller, but it is what it is. I think I'm gonna throw some um, ACME threaded rod through this tube um, with a nut on either side to give adjustability to the die holders so I can uh, have a range of size that I can fit in there. But uh, I'll have to wait for those to show up and I do believe the die set is also like a week and a half, maybe two weeks out. So this project is gonna be on hold for a little bit. Hey, what's going on everyone? So I'm gonna jump back on Yvette here in a little bit today, but um, my dies did arrive for my planishing hammer. Check it out, I'll give you a little sneak peek. These are all my new dies right here, of different radiuses for my planishing hammer. Here's the post right here that the dies fit into. So I'm gonna be using this post along with this ACME rod and these two um, nuts for it to make an adjustable uh, lower anvil. And essentially the way I'm accomplishing that is Here's the hoop that I built. I took a piece of inch and a half DOM and stuck it through the inch and three quarters clamp that I made. And I slid it into a, another piece of inch and three quarters. That's gonna be our base post. There's gonna be a nut welded onto the bottom of it right here for adjustment of the rod. And that'll push the uh, die holder up and down out of the tube right here. Cause the die holder OD is also inch and a half. As you can see here, I might be uh, welding this to a little bit of inch and a half DOM to get us more um, tubing inside of tubing, if that makes sense. Just so that as it slides up, it doesn't become wobbly. But uh, let's get this thing put together and see how it turns out. So this is what I've got so far. I've got the die post slide, slid inside the inch and three quarters DOM. It's a perfect fit because uh, the DOM tubing doesn't have a seam on the inside, an inch and a half. Eighth wall slides into inch and three quarters. Eighth wall, like perfectly, you can't even wiggle them around. Um, basically, what I'm thinking about doing now, I was going to weld this post to a piece of inch and a half tubing to make it longer so that when it would slide out, it would still be in the stem and keep it straight. But I'm thinking my chances of keeping it straight enough to actually slide in and out past the joint once I weld it is slim to none because anybody who welds knows that you'll get some shrinkage and I just I have a really good feeling that even though I have per both sides perfectly flat once I start tacking it together I just I don't know what I mean because I welded so much stuff I'm almost certain that it's going to tweak just a teensy bit one way or the other and it won't slide in anymore all the way so what I'm thinking of doing now is taking this extra nut that I have that I was gonna use as a jam nut and cutting this tube down some, welding the nut on, and then welding the remaining piece that I lopped off of inch and three quarters on top of the nut. And that should solve my problems, I think. I'm still, uh, still thinking on it a little bit, but that's where we're at. All right, well, I started doing some thinking. I haven't decided if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet, but I came up with this plan and took a piece of inch and three quarters, cut it down a little bit, drilled a hole in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the die holder in, and then I'm gonna insert a piece of inch and a half in the other side. And the inch and three quarters should keep it straight while I tack it through that hole and just keep twisting the inch and a half around until I tack it a bunch of times and pray that it doesn't move. So please keep your fingers crossed for me and let's hope that this works out. All right, so before we stick the tubes in there, we're gonna go ahead and just clean them one last time with our scotch Bright pad. <coughs> Blow the dust off. And we're gonna drop it in this way and pull it through. And the reason why is we don't wanna push a bunch of the gunk that's inside this other tube up into where we're gonna be 
joining these two pieces. And then we'll take our die, go ahead and stick it on in there as well. And there's the joint. So we're just gonna shoot a bunch of tacks on that and start twisting it around and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, here we go with the first tack weld. See what happens. Still spins, so we're in good shape. Go ahead and spin at 180. Lay another one down. Getting a little bit harder to spin. Um, I think the tack well kind of floated up a little bit instead of sunk down, so we'll try and melt it again. Unfortunately, it's gonna cause more shrinkage on this side. Still rotates, but getting tougher. And we keep getting a little nipple that's popping up right there. We will be able to sand that down once we finish this up and are able to remove it. But, uh, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I don't like that at all. Too tight. Oh yeah, now she don't move at all. No bueno. Let's see what we can do here. I went ahead and knocked the uh, part out that we're welding. It was pretty rough getting it out. Took a lot of hammering, but um, I cleaned it up a little bit with a file. And you can see, here's the joint. It goes in fine past there, but about three to four inches down it starts binding, which means we have a very slight angle in it, I would say. And uh, I think the only way to really fix that is to keep welding it. I don't know. Maybe we might have to cut it a little shorter, but uh, it's kind of a pain to get it up to where the welding point is now, so. We'll have to uh, think about it for a second. Cleaned it up some and I would stick it in as far as it would go until it started jamming. And then I would kind of twist it back and forth. You could see it made a mark here on the tube. And what that tells me is that this is the area where it shrunk and caused it to kind of make a little U or, or like, you know, pull together. And that's why it's binding here. So what it means is hypothetically, if I weld more on this side, It'll cause more shrinkage on this side, and then it should straighten out. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna give it a shot. As I suspected, it did remedy our issue, but it just transferred it to another side. Uh, albeit it is a little bit less bad now. I'm able to slide it back in without much force. So I've got it back in here, and we're gonna go ahead and just continue trying to uh, finish out this joint uh, just with uh, fusion welding and hopefully we're just gonna hope for the best see what happens worst case scenario we'll hammer it out split them apart sand down the edge and it should be good as new so here we go Everybody, here's the finished um, product. It is very slightly tweaked and I tried to compensate for it by heating one side of the joint again, but it didn't really seem to make much of a difference now that it's fully welded all the way around. 
I did lop off a large section of it because we don't need it. But uh, I've test fit it into a piece of inch and three quarters and it slides in pretty clean all the way till about here, which should work out just fine for us because we don't want it bottoming out and sitting on the die anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and try and insert it into our um, planishing hammer frame now and see how it works. All right, so I got it all put together. Um, the post is off center very slightly, but the hoop has a lot of play in it, and I think I'll be able to bend it into shape where it needs to go. I did uh, do a little quick test run on the back of the panel here, and uh, seems like it's doing what it's supposed to do. Just gotta fine tune it a little bit, and uh, we'll be on our way. So this is pretty much the finished products. Went ahead and uh, tweaked the main hoop a good amount, and we've got pretty solid alignment here on the dies now. And uh, all that's really left to do is to shorten the ACME threaded rod here, add a handle onto it so that it's easier to adjust. We've got our locking nut right here, so that's about it. I am gonna be making another hoop because I realized pretty quickly once I bent up this one that it's one hell of a lot too big to actually be useful as a handheld planishing hammer, but it'll make a good stationary hoop, kind of like my English wheel there. So I'll just make a mount for it and uh, hang it off the wall like that. And when I'm working on a little piece that I have in my hand or you know something along those lines that's not actually welded in to a body yet, it'll come real in handy for that. And the other hoop will work well for everything else. Might even make a couple different hoops, who knows. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. All right, so obviously this thing is way too big to fit in there upright, so I have to use it upside down right now. But I'm just going to kind of show you guys how it works. So I'm just going to go to the weld there, and uh, here we go.